I'm not in the camera. Am I? No, you're good. Okay. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, can we come on down here? Hello. My name is Mr. Danny, and this is my Congo English History English 11 class. Uh, we're doing a project called The History of Buena, and we have brought in Coach Juan today to talk to us about his experiences over the years from Buena. Um, I have a little bit of background here. Actually, I'll post to the site for the first moment. Um, so just a little bit of background for the sake of the people in the future watching this video and uh, for our students that are here in class. So uh, did I miss anything? We've got a teacher, coach, athletic director, um, and uh, this I found in a 1967 yearbook. And then this second picture is when we have Coach Vaughn uh, accepting or doing the dedication to the gym um, in his name. Uh, so just a little bit of history for the project here. Uh, our major question we're looking at is how is Buena changed and stayed the same over the years? Uh, we really want to try to tell the story of Buena High School, of the past, present, and future students. And we have multiple goals. Our main goal is we're just trying to create a digital archive. We've been going through the yearbooks, through the newspapers, um, trying to create a digital archive of sources that everyone can easily access online. We will build a published website and hopefully learn how to do history by actually looking at primary sources and writing our own secondary narratives. Um, and so we're doing research problem solving, archiving, citing sources as well, and uh, writing that narrative as well. But we want to hopefully collaborate effectively as a team, help each other um, to succeed, and put this together as a gift. Uh, we had a time capsule that was made in the first graduating class in 1962. It was opened in 82, 83. That was supposed to be opened in 2002, 2003, but I guess in 1992 they had a jump start, and I think they opened it then. Um, and we haven't had one since then. So this is the 60th year of the first graduating class of Buena High School. And I'm envisioning this website as a way of like doing our own kind of time capsule, preserving the past and building towards the future. But for Coach uh, Vaughn here, you correct me if I'm wrong in my research, uh, uh, Coach Vaughn has a record of 761 wins and 112 losses with two state titles, six CIF Southern section titles, 27 channel league titles. Every newspaper article I found with Coach Vaughn in it says local legend. Uh, Joe Vaughn. Um, we were the all-state champs in 82 and 83. The winningest girls basketball coach in state history. I'll ask you, is that only for girls or is that basketball in general? That was for girls, and I think someone's passed that now. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll have to clarify that. The guy from modern day. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, our girls basketball team was the first to reach 1,000 wins in the state in 2017, I believe. And this is the tickets to the state finals. This is our Buena uh, Vista coverage of that event. But uh, Coach Vaughn was not just an amazing coach and athletic director during his time at Buena. He was an amazing teacher and role model. Uh, he was coach of the month in January 2000. This article talks about how he would pick up plastic and aluminum after lunch to help clean the Buena environment. Um, I think it was really cool. And uh, our at local gym named after Joe Vaughn. This was a dedication ceremony in 2007. And the continued legacy. Uh, daughter Amy Vaughn Foster, who just walked in. Good morning. Um, and son-in-law Cody Foster. Uh, currently teaching at one high school. Uh, and also, I understand you came out of retirement in 2018 to help coach the freshman softball teams. And uh, we also have a future Bulldog in the mix, the grand baby. Very exciting. Um, so we're gonna put all this information together. We're gonna publish our website right now. The URL is gonna be w.com slash history of Buena. That might change down the road. But we are, again, trying to create um, as meaningful a history as we can. So with that said, I wanted to start off uh, before we get to questions, um, if you could just give us an opening kind of statement of um, what you feel is um, your experience of Buena High School um, over the years. And I will say this period is primarily focusing on 1961 to 19, uh, 1989. And then my second period class is focusing on 1990 to 2019, pretty much. Uh, but maybe you start off with your, uh, how did you get to Buena first? And then whatever you'd like to share, we'd love to hear. Okay. Thank you. Morning. Good to see all of you. Yeah, you guys are about to go live. I actually taught in this classroom for several years when I, when I was here at Boynton just, just a couple of years ago. Most of you are going to be here for 40 years, right? Okay. I was here 40 years. Yikes. Right? This is more typical of probably what I look like now than anything else. I loved my experience here. Uh, I know you think that's crazy. But uh, I hopefully when you get a job someday, you'll have a job that you like to come to work and you enjoy what you do. Don't just do a job for the money. Do a job because you love what you do. 
And I loved it because I loved working with young people, and this was just a great place to work. So I grew up here in Ventura. I spent my whole life here in Ventura. Buena opened my senior year of high school. I didn't stay here. Uh, excuse me, I didn't come here that year. 110 students came here in 1961-62. I stayed at Ventura because I was playing basketball. We had a really good team. I wasn't willing to leave the school my senior year, but there were 110 students that did that. Uh, so I was born and raised here, went to Anna Kappa, went to Will Rogers, uh, one, one quarter at Cabrillo, uh, and uh, actually my first year was at a place called Washington High School, uh, Washington Elementary School, which is now like that the Christian school down there on McMillan. So anyway, I've had a lot of experience. My mom and dad came here during the 1930s, during the Dust Bowl. You probably were talking about that in your U.S. history. They were Okies from Oklahoma. I love my parents, they're wonderful people. And um, they made me, I think, anything that was good about me was because of my mom and dad. There's no question in my mind about that. So I went to the school, graduated from Ventura. I went to Westmont College on the scholarship, played basketball at Westmont, which is up in Santa Barbara. Good morning. Um, and then uh, I came here and did my student teaching. And I had a terrific master teacher. That's the person you know, that you're under when you're doing your master when you're doing your student teaching. His name was Mr. Cameron. He was a dynamite. I, I thank him every day for what he taught me to become you know, a teacher. You keep learning as you go along, but he was terrific for me. Um, so I did my student teaching here. Um, I actually, you know, like most people, you want to come back to your high school. And I don't know how many of you know this, but before I left, there were about 20 to 25 Buena alumni at this school. So what's that tell you? They love what they they love coming here. They like the place. There's still a lot of them here. I don't know how many are here now. I know obviously Mr. Downey is. We just talked about this the other day. Uh, oh. These are all staff that uh, graduated from Buena High School. Okay. And so it's still around 29 or so. Oh, cool. So that tells you something about the school, right? And no, no school's perfect. Buena has issues just like any other high school, but it was for me and for a lot of students a terrific place to work and be. The staff was terrific. And like for most teachers, we teach because of you. If you don't, if you don't love or like students, you shouldn't be in this occupation. So most people you're going to be around, and I can say that for my daughter. I actually have two daughters here. This is G, uh, who teaches here also, is my oldest daughter, and then of course my son-in-law is Mr. Foster. And uh, I think a lot of them because one, they like what they do, and most of all, they'll do anything for you as students. Right? And that's extremely important as a teacher, and, and they were that way. So I came here in 67, 68. Uh, my first month here, I got drafted. I know you, they've talked about the draft at all. Well, I, it was during the Vietnam War. So I got drafted into the military. They let me finish the school year because of Artie McConnell, the auditorium is named after him. He was the principal here the first 20 years. So they let me finish the school year, and then I was gone from 67, or from 68, until 1970, and then I was here continuously from, from then on. Uh, so I've spent my entire career at the school. Uh, and like I said, I, uh, you know, there are good and bad days. Most days are great, but I can't remember really any days when I didn't want to come to school. I didn't want to come here uh, because of the people, because of students. So uh, it was a terrific experience to me, and it's all about people, right? It's one of the things I'm gonna tell you, and I'll tell you now because I don't want to forget. Associate with people in your life that are gonna construct your life, not destruct your life. So if you're running with people right now that are taking you down a wrong road or a way you know you shouldn't be going, dump them right now. Get around people that wanna build you up, right? wanna make you something. And I really felt like we had a lot of people here like that and a lot of staff that was like that. So my daughter said she thought it was like pulling from the mouth of the commercial. <laughs> All right, questions. Um, that's enough. Anything else you want me to say along that line? Uh, maybe we'll go with, um, what were some of the major changes you noticed throughout your career at Boynton? Okay. Uh, first of all, there's always going to be changes in a school because of the culture, right? Because of the society. Society kind of dictates that sometimes. So my wife was saying, here, here's an example. In the late 60s, all you people in here, the girls in here, you couldn't wear pants, you had to wear a dress, and you couldn't wear shorts. 
But that was kind of the way things were at that particular time, right? That's the way society was re responding. And anybody that wore, came to school, you couldn't even, for guys, you couldn't even wear a t-shirt, all right, unless it had a pocket on it. So you couldn't just wear like a regular t-shirt, right? All right, my man right there is wearing that, just a t-shirt. You would have had to have a pocket on that in the late 60s, right? So, there, so things like that change because of society. You know, and also uh, the thing, but the thing I do see that's the same is students. Really, all of you want to have a good life. All of you, hopefully, you want to be happy, right? And I don't think that's really changed at all. But society changes how we do things sometimes, and events change how we do things or how we view things, as you probably know. So when events or things happen within our society, Many times they will filter down to the school level at the same time. So I see that quite a bit. Um, but I think, I mean, I walked on the campus. Many of you were still sitting in the same places that people were sitting in, in the 60s uh, or, or, and in groups, all right? Along by the administration people, some people sitting along there all over. Now you have some other places now because you've had benches put in, you've had things overhead that were put in. But a lot of that, yeah, I say, God, it's just, it's just like when I first got here in 67, 68. So that's the way I kind of view it. Society kind of dictates sometimes about how that's going to happen. And it definitely has now, right? There's, there's things that you do now here because of what society on the outside is also doing. But also the job of the school, which you probably know, is to one, educate you and hopefully have you leave the school with better people. That's what we should all want, right? We should want to leave this place with better people. And I, and I think most administrators, most teachers, that's what they want for you. As long, sometimes they have to discipline you. Sometimes you don't like the things they have to do. But most teachers, they're here to help you grow and help you be a better person when you leave this place. And that's pretty important. Maybe um, before we go into uh, Q and A, because I'm expecting you to ask a lot of questions today. Um, but maybe just walk us through, what were some of the classes you taught? What were some of the different um, ways in which you've been involved on campus? Um, sure. Different, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I taught, and from any of my early years, I taught world history, a little bit of world culture. There used to be a class called International Affairs, and that was a class looking at, for instance, right now this with International Affairs would be terrific with what's happening in Ukraine, right? I mean, because you're looking at some things that are happening that are affecting so many things internationally. My last probably 20 years was almost all US history, which is what you guys are taking here. Uh, I taught college prep, I taught basic, we used to have basic, now there's pretty much just, everything is the same except for AP, correct? Yeah. So I primarily taught that. Um, I was uh, coached basketball, I also coached boys basketball actually for 10 years. And there were two years when I actually overlapped. So it used to be that girls basketball started in the spring didn't start like till January. So I was coaching boys basketball. I started coaching the girls and that just happened because I went to a PE class one time and they asked me to teach skills. So I did a, a class for a whole semester on the skills, basketball skills. So anyway, so I overlapped there for two months and I did that for two years and then it got to be kind of like, you know, I was coaching four games a week, uh, two practices every day, one in the morning, one at night. So I kind of got to like, I, 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 I think I'm crazy here. So, and, and then I was having such a great experience with girls basketball. Um, sometimes with boys, I don't mean this bad for boys at all, in athletics, they allow their egos to get in their way. They don't want to really always learn like they should. They, think, they tend to think they know it all. Not all guys are like that, but that was kind of what I was viewing at the time. Girls at that time were more coachable. Uh, they wanted to learn. Uh, they would listen and we did a lot of skill work and they bought into it and it paid off for us basically just because we went we were highly skilled uh, it wasn't we were always the best we were just highly skilled and then i became the athletic director obviously for over 20 years and uh, served under several principals here which that may be one of the questions that you ask uh, in a few minutes and uh, so when i left here i was coaching us i was the athletic director and then uh, my last year at the girls basketball um, I do want this to be primarily focused on what you're most interested in, um, particularly with your research. 
Um, this class, as I said, is um, focusing on 61 through 99. And so if you have specific things you found in your research with the yearbooks and the student newspapers, which we have all over here, um, that could help you tell your narrative, I would say start with those first. Um, but if not, then you have, we already compiled a bunch of questions. So um, I'm gonna ask, who wants to ask the first question today? Um, and just to make most of this really special opportunity that we have here. Question. Yeah. World history at the time, they were almost coming from the beginning of civilization. Mm -hmm. It was a year course. I don't know if it's still a year course or not. Is it still a year course? And it, but the, the first part would be kind of like, for instance, in U.S. right now, you do a little bit of background on early U.S. history, but it's primarily from the 20th century, or excuse me, from 1898 on. Is that pretty much still there? Uh, yeah, after yeah. Uh, Reconstruction. Period. Yeah, okay. So we were, so at that time, it would start early civilization, civilization and then a, kind of a brief, maybe a quarter of the school year looking at a lot of that. Then it would move into more of the later on uh, what was happening throughout the world at that time. So pretty similar, like, I think it's like 1750s to the rest of world history, where, because a lot of that's where the earlier um, versions of history is focused more on middle school. And then once we get to 10th grade, yeah. more modern history. What happens many times, as you probably know, the state make changes some of their requirements over the years about what they, they expect the, the uh, California teachers and California schools to teach. So sometimes that will change it also, you know, depending on what the expectation is uh, from the school district, from the state. Uh, how far would you normally get? Because, I mean, in usually in history class, you're not teaching current events necessarily. So I'm kind of curious in your world history and your history classes, um, where would you kind of end the year? Would you end at World War II or? Yeah, actually at, at, at the time, I kind of had a timeline set up where um, I would actually get almost to the end of, of US history. Now that's hard when you get to where you are right now. Interesting enough, you mentioned current events. I actually had a current event approach to my US history teaching. So I, every, there would always be current events in my class every day, five, six, seven, eight minutes about what was happening in the world at that time. And then what I tried to do was take those current happenings and relate them to something back in earlier US history. Because then I always felt like it made it more relevant to you. If you could take what's happening now and then look back, because when you just look back sometime or you start with that, it doesn't impact you, I think, as much. Not always, but I think the more you can relate it to what's happening right now, I think that's very, very helpful. So for me, I was trying to get as far as I could. Uh, in fact, this last, uh, the, the last quarter, I used to have a, a, a list of every assignment and everything that was going to happen uh, till the end of the year, and I called it the stretch, right? Because it was the home stretch of the, of the school year, trying to get, get through as much as we could during that particular process. World history, my memory's not quite as good, uh, but we would try to get to as much as we could about into, for instance, like um, the Cold War and all of that, even in world history, to get a flavor for what was happening. By the way, when I was drafted, uh, I spent a year in the States, and then, uh, you know, most people were going to Vietnam. And by the luck of the computer, I ended up going to Europe, and I was in Germany. So I was in Germany during the Cold War. I right? the Cold War wasn't over until 1989. So I was there, the wall was still up. There were Soviets in East Berlin. On the wall, there would be guard towers. There were East Berliners, and there were Soviet, one each in each guard tower. The idea was if one of them tried to escape, they'd shoot him. And there were actually people that were shot trying to escape from East Berlin while I was there. And they would just leave them there and let them die as an example. So like, don't do this, this is what happens to you. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, I think you had a question? Uh, she took my question. Oh, oh thank you. What's next? Thank you. So are there any um, special memories, special events that you can remember that happened between 1967 to 1969 in your school year? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, some of that I was gone because, again, I was drafted and I left in July of 68. So the only really year I would be able to talk about, and remember I didn't see now because I'm 78 years old, 
um, would be that first year. And for that first year, so much of it for me was involved in uh, trying to establish myself as a, as a teacher because it was my first year of teaching. Um, so I don't remember much of that. I, like I said, we were still in the middle of the Cold War. I do remember a lot of that. There was still a lot of this fear of the Soviet Union at that time, which you know, we know now was split up in 89, and Russia is now kind of the, the smaller part of that. So that, that, from that perspective, that's really all I can kind of re, you know, re hold on to at this point. Um, yeah. How many of your athletes have gone to play in college or like go pro for basketball, Boy, boys and girls? Uh, for girls, um, about 30 got college scholarships, and that was probably one of the most rewarding parts about uh, coaching, is seeing people have a chance. Because remember, early on, uh, girls, women, did not get scholarships for athletics. So to all of a sudden see that happen was so gratifying uh, to see that, you know, that they're getting a chance to get a college education like a lot of men, and it's, and it's paid for. Uh, right now, there's one player that played for me, Sammy Wickham. She plays in the WNBA. Um, she will probably be inducted into the Ventura County Hall of Fame, not this year, but next year. Uh, she started out with the Seattle Storm. She was on two of their WNBA championships. Um, she now plays for New York, uh, Liberty. Um, one of the most rewarding things about her is, like many of our players, she continued to develop as she went through high school and even into college. A lot of people kind of start to drag a little bit when they get into college. They don't continue working as much as they should. She wasn't, she wasn't picked up by a Connecticut or UCLA. She was picked up by University of Washington, which was a, a good division one school, but she kept working, all right? She's an unbelievable three-point shooter. She was in the three-point shooting contest this year with an all-star game for him. Uh, more than anything else, I will tell you this, she is one tremendous person. Uh, and that is, says a lot. She still remembers. She will send me something on my birthday, a, a note or an email. You know, and a lot of students, you know, will do that, but she was just a terrific person. So she's the only one professionally that's playing right now. We've had some other winning athletes that have played professionally, but from my team, that was the only one. Thank you. Speaking of championships, do you mind talking about the Valenda All State Championships? Well, it was, you know, it was, it was a great experience. My whole thing at that time was, uh, this kind of, sounds kind of weird, but I, I really was interested in putting Buena High School in Ventura on the map as something that people would know about and remember. Not that it was just about girls basketball, but then they would find out other things about this school. They would find out that it was a tremendous academic school. They would find out so many other things about us. So from that perspective, it was, uh, it was a great experience. Uh, it's a whirlwind time period. Uh, we played some schools, to be, all, all, to be very honest with you, at teams that probably athletically were better than us. But they weren't more skilled than us. I can honestly say that. They were not more skilled. And that's why if you're involved in a sport, work on your skill. It, it, it covers up so much. And it makes you, gives you an opportunity to be you know, successful. Plus you feel good, right, about it when you try to become as good as you can become. So it was a good experience. Our first one, obviously, uh, was extremely rewarding. Our second one, we played up in, in Oakland, up in the, the Bay Area against Los Gatos. Uh, the, the biggest thing I look back on, and I, when I look at pictures or look at video, is to see the players after the games. The excitement, the look on their face, the things they would say afterwards, like this has been such a rewarding experience, knowing that I put in all that time but more than anything else, that we did it as a team. You know, if you're in team sport, you know what I'm talking about. There's nothing better than a, a group of people, maybe didn't even know each other before they got together over the years, or maybe somebody moved in, and they come together for a common cause, right? A common, that's to try to be successful as a team. Thank you. I'm gonna answer that question. I can ask somebody. I can say something. <laughs> well, um, kind of backtracking a little sure. bit. So earlier you mentioned that 
You know, that's a good question. I think it was like the late 70s, but I'm not positive about that. Uh, I tried not to get wrapped up in that a lot, because uh, I always viewed it if, if, uh, if you did your job and you worked hard, uh, as long as you were decent and dressed, I'm not gonna get my bowels in an uproar here, by the way. I'm not gonna get upset. So I think it was probably about 10 years after that you started seeing some of that change, but it was almost like I mean, there were VPs out on the campus, vice principals out on the campus, and you were automatically sent home. I mean, they, they walked on the campus, or first period teachers saw you, and it was, it was a pretty strict environment at that time. But it was pretty much, you know, culturally that way, too. I mean, you look at your culture now, what you see on, on the internet, what you see at concerts, what you see in a lot of different venues, uh, it's different, right? It probably still shocks some older people older than 78, right? I'm talking about really old people. Okay, thank you. Yes? Um, what were slave days and boots of follow? You know, my wife and I were talking about that last night. That was kind of interesting. That would be totally unacceptable now, right? So again, remember what I said early on? It's kind of like, what society is kind of accepting and, and a, a time period where certain things are acceptable because they don't view them maybe in the way that let's say now you might view something. So what it was is that uh, guys would be put up as slaves. Girls would bid on them to do things like carry their books to class, bring them their lunch, all right? But for a lot of young ladies too, I think it was probably like you know, I'm interested in this guy, so if I make him a slave, maybe maybe we'll develop some type of you know relationship or something. But again, you you could not try to present to cabinet right now, hey, we're gonna have slave days. I tell you what, there'd be people jumping out of their uh, their seats in the office, all right, because that would just be not totally unacceptable at this particular time. But it all sometimes depends on the time period, right? Uh, where it's at. People don't always, view, they view the situation maybe differently. Now, I'm not saying it always makes it right, but it is the time period that sometimes evaluates how they view things. And obviously now that would not be something that would occur, which is oops, probably the way it should be at this point, right, in our history. Because right. we, have, we have different views. We see things differently. Um, at the time it was a fundraiser, really. Yes, so, cool. I, I was gonna mention that, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, yeah, it was a fundraiser, right? And I can't remember the club, whether it was... Uh, I think it was a key club. Oh, okay. Or no, no the Girls League, League. What, maybe... I think it was the Knights. Oh, okay, yeah. There was a service club on campus called the Knights, and uh, it was involved in that, that particular group, so. But it was interesting, you know, my wife can remember that. Uh, you know, my wife went to school here, so yeah. her mother. And she worked here as well. She worked here as well. My <laughs> wife uh, taught U.S. history. That's actually where I met my wife here. Um, she taught foods, nutrition. Um, she taught marriage and family. Um, she was the pep squad advisor here. So when I met my wife, because I was in sports, I would see her at a lot of the athletic events, like basketball and so on. So that's why I ended up meeting uh, my wife, well, because she was a pep squad advisor. I was coaching, and we kind of ran into each other. Her word to me in the beginning was, when she'd see any of us like up in the office grabbing her stuff, she said, I really don't want to have anything to do with jocks, all right? Now at that time, jocks, you guys know what that term means? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Because again, at that time, we won't get into it too much, but all of you now, if you dress for a sport, you probably wear, box, all the guys, you wear boxers or something else, all right? Back in that time period, everybody wore a jock strap, all right? Mm -hmm. So the term for an athlete was a jock. Right, because of that particular term, jock strap. But anyway, so enough information there, right? Too much information. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, how do you feel about your daughter and son-in-law working at Buena? Okay. Yeah. Well, again, I have two daughters teaching here, and my son-in-law. Uh, I love that they're all teaching here. Um, they obviously had a good experience when they were in high school. Um, they are very dedicated to what they do. I know that. And more than anything else, also, they they care about students. And that's big for me. They get 
right? They get it. Um, they will go through the wall for students. Don't discipline them. Don't make sure they're doing the right things. Um, so I'm, I'm excited that they're here. We've kind of had teachers here, really. Uh, Vaughn's here since, well, since I started until right now. So we've had to put up with a Vaughn, Foster, whatever it happens to be, for a long period of time. So I'm extremely happy that they're here and I'm happy what they do. And, and I'm happy because they do a great job. You know, they're, and I, I can't tell you for sure, but I bet if I talk to most students, they are respected here on this campus. That's, that's a good feeling. Yeah. Which teacher your daughter? Okay, one of my daughters right back there, Mrs. Foster. Oh. All right, Mr. Foster teaches in science. He's oh. a biology, marine biology. And then my uh, oldest daughter, who this kind of tells you something, she's 50. At 48, she went back and got her credential. Her husband was a minister, so they traveled. They were in different places around the country. But she came back and decided at 48, not easy to go back to school at 48 and got her credential and teaches here. She teaches in, in uh, special ed department, so she's loving it. So speaking of happiest memories, is there one particular moment in your history at Glen High School that kind of stands out as like the happiest kind of memories you have, or the most meaningful maybe in regards to just fun or maybe impact that you had on student or staff members? Sure. Uh, I, I really feel like I had a lot of them. But the thing that stands out to me the most is being a part of building the stadium. Um, all we kept saying was, we want to see the look on the students' faces when they play football, run track, play soccer. That was our motivation. When we remember, I don't know how much you know about it. We raised over a million dollars to build that stadium. The, the, the uh, theme was home at last. Now, probably none of you know this, but we always played all of our football games at Larrabee Stadium. That wasn't our home, all right? It was somebody else's home. And so to be able to be a part of that, when that finally came to fruition, it was exciting. I, I, it, I can remember going down to a, the first track meet to see those kids on that. It used to be a dirt track, a dirt track, all right? And to see that whole thing change, the, field, the football field had gopher holes in it. I mean, it was not solid grass because everybody was playing on it, PE. So to me, when that occurred, when we saw that come to fruition, that was one of the most exciting things. And I still, if I go to football games or anything, I mean, this, and you look, I sit there and I'm just thinking, wow, to be a part of that. I mean, that was, you know, we had a lot of wonderful people, staff here at this school, uh, administrators, we had parents that were on the committee. There was a committee anywhere from, it varied from about 15 to 20 of us over a period of a few years. Uh, there were alumni that came back uh, that worked on the committee and donated and, and did all kinds of things to make that happen. We had an alumni who used to own the Harley Davidson franchise. He donated a Harley Davidson so we could auction it off. And then a teacher won it and gave it back to the school. It was, I mean, the things like that were like, wow. I mean, that this tells you what people felt about this place. Uh, I still think, and uh, sometimes I get emotional, this was a great place to be. I, I honestly mean that, I'm not gonna say it, nothing's perfect, but man, you, you have an opportunity in this high school to really have a good experience. And, and everybody wants that for you. And I had that. I had that for 40 years, uh, and I'm so appreciative, but the stadium would, would have been at the top. There are others, but the stadium is at the top. That's awesome. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't bring this up. I know sometimes it's brought up more often than maybe necessary, but um, speaking of alumni, uh, I know that you um, and your wife worked with Kevin Costner when he went to school here briefly. Um, can you describe your experience of getting to know him as a young man and, and your time since then? Sure. Um, my wife knew him later on, but so Kevin was here one year. His dad worked for Edison, so every year he got moved to a different high school, which is, as you know, some of you had to go experience that. It's tough if you have to move your schools, all right, because you develop friends, you get comfortable, you like where you're at. 
So he came here as a sophomore. He played, at that time they had what they called C, D, and J, D basketball. So C's were, it was by your height, weight, and age. So my first year in high school, I was a C, all right? I'm not very big. But Kevin was a C. He was about 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, he had size 10 shoes. So I kept telling him, don't worry. You're gonna, if people have big feet, all right? They're gonna get bigger, all right? They're gonna get bigger. So when I was here, I didn't, you know, he wasn't, I wasn't thinking, this guy's gonna be a, a movie star someday. I think I'll be his friend. I think I'll treat him well. There wasn't anything about that at all, right? He didn't, that never even occurred until after he got out of college. But he was an individual that wanted to be a better player. He's an individual that was still kind of trying to find himself as an individual. He was, again, now about 5'5", five, five, 125 pounds. Right now, you know, he's about 6'2", 180. I'm, he's probably a little bit more right now because he's probably been eating too much. But <laughs> anyway, uh, so I, I developed a relationship because I spent time with him after practice. He wanted to work on his game. So I would stay with him after practice. And then he left after that year. I didn't have any contact with him till, till a few years later. And then all of a sudden one day, he came back on his campus and he was looking for me. And he just came back and said, I want to tell you what you did for my life. When I was struggling as a young sophomore in high school, you kind of took me under your wing. And again, I didn't take him under my wing and go, you're gonna be a movie star someday, so I'm gonna like you or help you. No, I just did because he was a student that any of us as teachers would do, would try to help. So that developed in, obviously, we, we, would, we got invited to a lot of his premieres. He won Academy Awards, as you probably know, for Dances with Wolves. We were up on the set of Dances with Wolves. Uh, that Amy was up there with a little, little girl. She probably didn't remember too much about it, but he had her up on the chair watching them do the filming and all of that. So. But he's been really good to our family. I don't see him a lot, a, a lot of times, because I don't invade his life. I don't come and say, hey, uh, can I come up? Or, uh, hey, what are we doing next, all right? If he wants to involve, because he, somebody in that, it's a different world, all right? Being in the world he's in, with the amount of money involved and all that, it's a different world. He named his son after me. And, and uh, you know, I've, you know, you know, why? Why? You know, because somehow, and this is your chance too to think about this, when some people are struggling or just trying to find themselves, are you willing to put your arm around them and say, hey, I'm going to be your friend. I'm going to help construct your life. I'm not going to destruct your life. I'm going to help construct your life. And, and that was obviously the intent at that time. I didn't know the impact at all. Had no clue of the impact. And yet it, it happened. And I'm grateful for that. But, it, but I'm hoping that there were other Kevin Costners that were not movie stars, that hopefully, you know, us as teachers had a chance to maybe put our arm around them and say, hey, what can I do for you? Or you're struggling, how can we make this happen? Or can I help you in your struggles at home or whatever else? You know, hopefully we, there's a lot of us are still willing to do that. And that, that aren't well known, that their name is never gonna be in the paper. And yet you hopefully influence their own. Any other burning questions here? Yeah. Um, what were smoking policies like back then versus now? What was smoking rules uh, like? Yeah, what was smoking policies? Okay, definitely very strict, but here's an interesting one, and a lot of us fought this for a while. Teachers could go in the bathroom, in some of these bathrooms on campus, and smoke in between classes. Can you believe that? <laughs> and we, and there's a group of us that fought that like crazy. This is not right. And finally, the principal said, that's it, no more. And it was kind of like, really? And, uh, but they were very strict. They, they wouldn't even allow people, you know, like to go off campus, like let's say at the break or, or at lunch uh, to do this. So it was, it was a very strict policy at that time. Uh, there were even times where they, they, I know they still do this, locked restrooms because people would abuse the privilege of going to the bathroom, you know. I mean, for me as a, as a student or even as a person, I'm gonna go in, all right, because I need to relieve myself and the, and the room smells like smoke. Really? Come on, now, now you're invading my space by, by doing that. So they were definitely real strict at that particular time. But I thought it was interesting 
there was this line about faculty early on in the very in the early 60s and early 70s, and finally they laid down the law on that and stopped it. Good question. By the way, we've had some other people, you know, that have done well at this school. Um, obviously, and by the way, Kevin never was in a drama, in a play or anything. He, he, when in his senior year in college, he kind of goes, God, I kind of like to try this. So the point is too, you never know where your, your life's gonna evolve, right? When all of a sudden you figure out you have this interest. I know a guy who retired, he was an athlete at Ventura High School. And he retired as a teacher there. He, could, he had this ability, uh, artistic ability that was off the charts. He saw some of his work, but he wouldn't do it in high school or why he taught because he thought it wasn't cool. Isn't that interesting? And then once he got out, he even built a room above his house now that he has a studio. But at the time, so you always have these opportunities in your life, you know, to, to maybe get involved in something. Something all of a sudden says, God, I might like to do that. You may not be very good at it at first, but you might also be, you know, very good at it over a period of time. So don't ever close doors, you know, on things sort of later. So some of you know who Zach Levi is, all right? Zach Levi was definitely in a lot of plays here, and, and he's done extremely well, all right, in, in, the, in the world. He was, you guys know any of the movies he was in? Oh, what did you say? Yeah. Uh, Shazam. Shazam. Angle, yeah. Uh, Chuck. Chuck was the TV program, right? Yeah. He, what was the movie that just came out where he was the on the lamb? Oh, um, I know what you're talking American about. American Underdog, I think. Oh, yeah. 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 He was also an Alvin and the Chipmunks, the sweet movie. Yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah. Right. <laughs> He's a good guy, really good guy. Some of probably most of you don't know Freddie Chiaho at all. You remember Liz Morgan that was uh, security here on campus? You retired two years ago. We it? might be going through the yeah. pandemic where we might have to. Oh, that's right. You weren't on campus, right? Anyway, Liz's son is Freddie Chiaho, and he played for the Indianapolis Colts when they won the Super Bowl. Um, and he obviously played here at Buena. She had four sons, but he was one of them and, and did extremely well. He again is, if you ever, if you ever came to the classroom, he is one wonderful individual. Uh, I can say that about all those people. They are wonderful people. They treat people right. And Freddie is definitely one of those. Some of that because of his mom. If you knew his mom, she could, she laid out the law on him, but she was the most loving person uh, in this campus as a security person for over 20 years. I mean, terrific. You think she likes students, right? Stay here 20. I'm nuts, I stayed here 40. She was smart, she got out of 20, right? <laughs> well, I, I, one of our questions I think was similar to that. Um, you, you've seen a lot of students come through the school. Um, what are some of the traits that you think for, or most common traits of students who end up being very successful that you see? Yeah, um, some of them are, are the things that I definitely believe in. Uh, one of them is hard work, all right? I learned that from my, and that this is, I don't mean this, but I, don't, I have no problem saying, my parents were Okies from Oklahoma. They were the best, all right? But they were the hard, hard working people. You guys know where McConnell's is, the ice cream place? Yeah. That used to be the Mission Bell Cafe. My mom and dad, they were the mom and pop people at the Mission Bell Cafe. But I taught, they taught me hard work. And I've seen that in, in over the years, students, if they were hard working, they had a good chance of being successful. And here's one that I find kind of interesting because I talk to people now that have businesses in John Venture and so on. One of the things they're looking for is people that are on time. I'm not picking on anybody when I say that, please don't think that. But they view that as one of the characteristics. But also, here's the one that is the most important one to be. Dependable people. Can I count on you? Right, there are people now, there's one of my students from my first year of coaching. If I call him right now and said, I need you, he would drop what he's doing and he'd come to Ventura. All right. Now I know a lot of people like that because I have tried to be like that, all right? If I tell you today, I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it, all right? And you want people that you can count on in your life. Some of you, I know that's been a struggle maybe in different phases of your life. 
but be that person that people can count on. Because the people that I've seen that have been successful, you can count on them. And they are not afraid to work, right? And they are on time. Those are really critical. There are others, by the way. Yes, sir? Um, like you talked about how you kind of impacted Kevin Costner's life. But have a student ever impacted your life? As students? Yeah. Or well, I, I actually, you know, this is one thing you don't think about. I think I learned a lot from students over the years. Um, sometimes in one-on-one -on -one situations, hearing about their life. And for instance, one thing that always I have always said, and I used to say this to other faculty members, don't judge a student till you know what their life is like. I don't know what all of your lives are like at home but I know some of them are off the charts. I know some of them are in the middle. I know some of them are a daily challenge. So I used to tell teachers, don't make a decision on that student until you know how they are having to live. All right? and, and that's really important, I, I think, to know that. Um, let's see, say what you said again to me, did I get off track? Yeah, and I think many of them have because of things like that. I, I will be with them or I'll see what they've gone through. Sometimes I've had students that have motivated me just because I knew their situation and they, and they worked to be above their situation. I mean, that's motivating when you see people do that. All right, or when you see people that have had a lot of issues in their life, and I'll always say, don't be crying about a hangnail when you've seen what a lot of other people are going through. You know? Some people have had a truck run over, not literally, but they've had a truck run over in their lives. So don't really whine and dine about small things. So that's one of the things I think that has affected me more than anything else was seeing, because see, I came from, I came from a wonderful home. My parents followed, my parents followed everything that I did. My dad would close up the Mission Bell Cafe and come to a game. Uh, they were there for me, always. This is a little crazy, but when I'm working in the oil fields in college, my mom still wrote notes in my lunch. I'm like, really, mom? You're doing this? But all she was saying to me, I still care about you, son. All right? So I, I came from a home where people were always supporting. And, 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 and then I see students where that isn't always the truth. And it's, it's, it's affected me. It's made me realize not everybody has, is raised in the same way, has had the same opportunities as others. So I think that as much as anything else has, has affected my thinking. Thank you, I appreciate that question. Yeah. So you worked here for about 40 years and obviously there was a lot of principals through time. Um, what was it like working under many different principals and which one would you say was your favorite? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I, I really enjoyed almost all the well, all the principals while I was here that I had. Um, and uh, Artie McConnell, the, the auditorium, was here for 20 years. Um, I thought a lot of him because he expected a lot. One of the first bulletins I wrote, he was an English major. I, I had some little mistake in the bulletin thing that I put in there. It used to be a paper one that they read in class. I think it's up here now. They, they do it on video, right, or something. I'm coming to next school the next day, and I see this. I walk into his office. He goes, uh, this bulletin here, you needed like a comma. I can't remember what it was, a comma or something like that. And, I, and so I, I liked him because he was a straight shooter. One of the things I tried to do, especially as an athletic director, but even as a teacher, any principal that came here, I'd walk in before they started and say, if you want somebody else to do my job, I have no problem with that. But if you want me to do the job, I'm always going to shoot straight with you, and I want you to shoot straight with me. Don't feed me any bull. Tell me exactly what it is, and I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. So I thought a lot of our early, we had, you know, Mike, Mike Johnson, one of the principals I still bike ride with. Uh, Jamie Castellanos was here. Mike Shanahan was here. I guess McConnell stands out to me because of this one story. And one of the questions in there was, you know, what, what, what was one of the toughest times you had here at Buena? 
We were playing a CIF quarterfinal game in the gym over there. Artie McConnell always sat below the B up there. He, followed, he came to every game. He was just all, all sports. His sons were like outstanding swimmers and so on. He had a heart attack in the third quarter. He died. That for me was the most difficult moment in my career. I, I loved him as a person and as a principal. We had three nurses there in the gym. They couldn't revive him. We took him out. Because it was a CIF game, we had to finish the game. But I'll never forget that experience because of, because of what he meant to me. One, he hired me, all right? But then he was one of those most supportive people. He'd call you on the line if there's something, all right? I had a caller along in the bulletin, come on in, right? But also he was so, so supportive. And when that happened, it crushed me for a while. Because, you know, when you lose somebody, you've all gone through this. When you lose somebody that means a lot, you never get over it. You learn to live with it, right? I'll never get over my mom and dad's passing. They were my life. But I have to learn to live with it, right? Because they're not coming back. I'll be with them again someday. But they're gone. So that's that that experience, probably already just because of that. Although the other ones I had really good experiences with, the other principals also. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I'd say overall, uh, not really many, because I just tried to live my life the, the best I could. But I guess from uh, my perspective, when I was teaching, coaching, and AD, I got here every day at 7 a.m. There were days I didn't leave till 7, 8, or 9. So my only regret would be the times that I felt I shortchanged my family in terms of my time. Uh, that would weigh on me at times. Um, so from that perspective, that would be that would be one thing. Other than that, I uh, um, I can't think of anything that that uh, I mean I made mistakes in my life. So those are things you know you wish you hadn't done. But from that that time perspective, I'll always you know wonder did I give as much as I could. Fortunately, my wife was dynamite, uh, and and. and did so much for the kids and so much for me. You, know, you can't do what teachers do and what coaches do unless you've got a support system. And I had a terrific support system. So my job now, as, a, as a, I've been retired now 15 years in June, is now I'm gonna be her support system. I do all the grocery shopping. All right. Thank you. I think we have time to get one last one real quick. Okay. Um, how would you like to be remembered? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I would like to remember someone that tried to give as much as they could to a, a school and, and make, make a school something special. Uh, I'd like to remember someone that cared a lot about students and would go the extra mile for students. That was really uh, important to me to do that. Thank you. Just to bring class to a close here, uh, keep in mind, uh, you have your own interview to do. It does not need to be an entire hour, okay? Uh, five, ten minutes, but make sure that you follow through with that. Um, we need to get these done in the next day or two so that we can share that out with our web designer, okay? And uh, I'll just share, it's still in draft mode, but we're, we're building this website right now. This is some of the uh, football things being built. But we'll share this uh, with you and the community once we're done. I'm very excited to see this project. It's been just a blast to work on this. And um, it's great you're doing it. I really commend you. You guys are really helping him by doing what you're doing. It's pretty cool to have that. People able to look back and see what happened. You know, when Wayne opened, there was uh, ninth graders for one year. And we really never had ninth graders on this campus until the mid 80s. It used to be just sophomore juniors and seniors, and all of the schools, the middle schools, were junior highs, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Maybe some of you knew that. So, so that's that's a, definitely a change.
any questions about our project and steps, just let me know. I'll put it out there. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. I'm not being close to the website. 